Hi, hello. Welcome to Proxies, Pods, and Ports. I'm Aaron Alpar with Kasten by Veeam. Uh, Kasten makes backup products. We're currently number one in Kubernetes backup. Uh, my name is Aaron Alpar. I've been working with Kubernetes since approximately 2016. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about various ways of accessing uh, pods. Um, KubeCuddle has, uh, provides various means of getting access to a pod. I'll be talking about those. And this is going to be a wide-ranging presentation. And my focus is going to be on covering uh, most all the ways there are to do that. All, uh, probably almost all of these will be familiar. Uh, what I'm hoping is that you'll pick up little bits and pieces uh, that you may not have known uh, along the way. So this will be a good overview of the available methods, uh, as well as getting into some details uh, that may be interesting. So uh, pods have various access points uh, using KubeCuddle. Uh, they can be accessed through the API server. I'll be talking about methods of doing that. Uh, I'll be talking about using port forwarding uh, to access pod ports directly, and I'll be talking about the standard streams, uh, standard in, standard out, and standard error. I'll ta be talking a little bit about logs uh, as well, uh, so just, just for complete coverage. What I'll be talking about first is the API server proxy. The API server proxy allows direct access to the API server by HTTP proxy. Here you can act, access the API server by using a local port, HTTP, um, to access the API endpoints in Kubernetes. This is really valuable for scripting, uh, for debugging, and in some cases, accessing alpha or beta features that don't yet have integration with kubectl. Um, this is similar to using raw, the raw option on kubectl. If you're not familiar with it, that's OK. Uh, I'll be talking about that more. This presentation is going to use plenty of command examples. And these command examples are going to be executed against a deployment and a service. Uh, here I provided the YAML for both the deployment and the service. And here's the deployment, a very simple X, Nginx deployment with an Nginx container. The service allows network access to that Nginx container um, on port 80. Here's the service YAML for that. The first topic I'm going to talk about is the API server proxy. The API server proxy allows direct access to the API server via HTTP connection uh, from a local port. Uh, this is very useful for debugging or executing commands that uh, are in alpha or beta and not fully supported in kubectl. Uh, forward connections are uh, forwarded connections are automatically amended with authentication state, so there's no need to uh, um, provide additional authentication or uh, when forwarding connections. Uh, here's how you start up an API server proxy. It's very si simple, kubectl proxy. Uh, there are other options here for specifying local ports on, or hosts to listen to. In this case, we're just going to go with the default options. This will start up a proxy that listens on eight, port 8001 on localhost. In this example below, I'm testing it out uh, by uh, getting the root for the API server, which will show me a list of paths that are available on the API server. Uh, here, I'll show you a couple of examples of uh, kubectl commands and how you might represent those as curl commands uh, once you're using the API server proxy. Uh, so here, I'm getting all the namespaces listed as table. And here, I can do an equivalent uh, by accessing uh, localhost 8001 API v1 namespaces. And that will list out the namespaces. Uh, here's an example of getting a singular pod, uh, in this case, the Nginx deployment pod. And here is a curl example uh, that I might use uh, using the API server proxy. Now, the API server proxy not only allows you to uh, access resources, uh, but it allows you to access uh, ports on pods and services. So talking a little bit about that. And specifically, I'll be talking about service services and accessing service points ports first. So uh, assuming, of course, that you have a uh, API server proxy running locally, 
uh, here's a curl command to go through that. And you'll see here that I'm accessing a service uh, in namespace demo one. Uh, the service is called Nginx uh, service. This is the service that I showed you earlier in the YAML file. Uh, note on the end, um, it has HTTP. So for services, uh, this HTTP that's on the end is the service name, the uh, port, rather the port name in the service that I want to proxy through. Uh, at the end, you put slash proxy, and uh, that is uh, the API server's indication that you wish to proxy through this port. Uh, as you can see below, once I proxy through that port, it's actually accessing the Nginx server uh, that's behind that service. So this is a really handy way of uh, proxying to services without actually through the API, through the API server proxy without having to set up a separate proxy. Uh, of course, this is only going to work for HTTP or HTTPS connections. Um, at the end of that proxy URL, you can add any other uh, uh, additional URL uh, path options as well as uh, uh, query parameters. In the case that I showed you, in this case, it's uh, YAML I showed you earlier, uh, where the port has a name, HTTP, and you can see that that's uh, the same, that maps the same name that's in the URL. Uh, here's the full form for that. Um, if you're using an API server proxy and you wish to access a specific service port, this is how you'd go about doing it. Again, uh, additional UL, URL path parameters can be added onto the end as well as query parameters. So if you'd like to do the same, similarly for pod, you can do that. Uh, the form is very similar. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm using curl against the API server proxy uh, to access uh, port 80 on a, on a pod. Uh, in this case, it's a pod in my deployment, uh, Nginx deployment. And you can see here that I'm accessing uh, port 80 on the pod. So once again, uh, just like the service example, uh, this shows that I'm accessing Nginx uh, I'm accessing Nginx that's uh, running on that pod on port 80. So uh, similarly, if we actually go and look at that pod, we can see that the container port is uh, exposed on port 80. Uh, and that's how I would get access to it. So. Here's the form. It's very similar to the services, um, except that you specify a port number as opposed to a port name. So uh, KubeCuddle Proxy uh, offers the ability to access uh, resource definitions within the uh, Kubernetes API in the Kubernetes API server. Not only that, but it allows you to access pods and service endpoints. Very useful for debugging. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, next. Um, so you can use the uh, KubeCuddle Proxy to get access to the API server and uh, basically use it for debugging. And something that's valuable uh, is to use uh, kubectl v9. Uh, dash v is the verbose option. Um, and then followed by an integer. And you can specify uh, an integer all from 0 to 9. Uh, the lower the value, the less debugging information. The higher the value, the more debugging information. What's special about v9 is that it outputs curl commands that can then be modified and used uh, to access uh, resources through a proxy server. So in this example, I'm simply getting all the pods from all the namespaces. Uh, and I'm specifying verbose 9 on the command line. Uh, here's the output from that. And this is the first few lines here are all debugging output. And what's buried in there is a curl command. So this curl command is the curl is the equivalent. Uh, if if kubectl was using curl, it would be the curl equivalent of uh, the the URL uh, or the endpoint that it accessed in the in the API server. Uh, this can be modified uh, and used uh, to then uh, execute that uh, against the API server. Uh, once again, you would 
set up a, a, a an API server proxy in order to get access to that. So it's very useful to use this in conjunction uh, with kubectl uh, to v9 to see what the URLs that the uh, kubectl is actually accessing in the API server, uh, and then you can do some debugging using the proxy. So. Um, what this offers you is non-truncated debugging output uh, for kubectl, which is very valuable. Uh, it's useful for also getting those curl commands uh, for the API server equivalents to kubectl commands. Um, and uh, if you like, you can use val values less than nine uh, to output less. Um, eight truncates output, uh, seven just provides headers, so on and so forth. So that's, that is it uh, for the API server proxy. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about next is something that's similar, which is the raw option on kubectl. Um, uh, get, create, and delete uh, all offer a dash dash raw option. Uh, this allows you to submit U API server URLs using kubectl, uh, and it provides JSON output. So I'll show you. Uh, here's an example of using dash dash raw. Uh, here I'm using kubectl get, but instead of telling it what resource I'm looking for, I'm going to give it a dash dash raw option. And then this should look familiar, the API v1 namespaces. This is going to list all the namespaces that are available in my API server. Um, if you're not familiar with JQ, I recommend you get familiar with it. Here I'm piping it through JQ. This is just going to format the JSON for me nicely. Uh, and uh, below, you'll see that I'm getting a list of namespaces out. So, uh, of course, this can be used for basically any endpoint that you could normally uh, use with the API server proxy. Uh, here, I'm getting uh, uh, the service, uh, Nginx service, uh, and piping it through JQ again. And there's the JSON for it uh, being, being output. So uh, those are examples of get. Now I'm going to show you an example of a delete and a create. And in order to do that, uh, I'm going to be using this service.json file. All this is is the service that I had earlier uh, in JSON instead of YAML. So here we go. Uh, if I go ahead and uh, I can go ahead and kubectl delete. I use the raw option and specify the API server URL. Uh, uh, for the resource that I'd like to delete. Uh, I have to specify a full name here. And in this case, is I'm going to delete the uh, Nginx service. So I get the JSON response that says that it worked. Um, I can then go ahead and recreate that using kubectl create uh, dash dash raw, um, specify the, the resource name or resource type that uh, I'd like to create. Um, give it the file for the JSON, and it'll create it. And if it successfully creates it, it'll output the service back to me. Uh, you can pass in query options when using raw. Here's an example of using the limit uh, to limit the number of results that come back. So. so the raw option on kubectl allows you to get access to get, post, and delete methods uh, in the API server from kubectl without the need for setting up a uh, API server proxy. So it's rather handy that way. Um, you can add e URL query arguments to do things like limit the number of uh, records that come back, uh, set continuation tokens, uh, so on and so forth. So it's a very good tool to have in your toolbox. So that's, that pretty much covers it in terms of ways to access the API server or the APIs using kubectl, either by the API, API server proxy or by using raw. Uh, that'll give you access to uh, basically any endpoint there on the API server for getting resource metadata. Um, there's another way of uh, accessing uh, your ports and services, and of course, that's through port forwarding. I'm sure most of you have already used this. Uh, I'm going to be giving you a very short overview of uh, uh, port forwarding, basically for completeness, um, 
to show you that it's here uh, and discuss a couple of the limitations of it. Uh, port forwarding forwards TCP ports to uh, pods and services. Um, containers specifically, uh, it can only do TCP, it can't do UDP. Um, it uses HTTP2 streams uh, to go ahead and do this, uh, which can create some difficulty if, you're, if you have a proxy server, a reverse proxy rather, uh, between you and the server that you're trying to access. Um, this is uh, really, uh, really handy if you want to browse uh, the contents uh, using a web browser in one of your pods or containers. So it's handy. Um, and you can use this to uh, pass through any TCP protocol, uh, uh, not just HTTP and HTTPS, as you would get with the uh, the API server proxy, uh, HTTP and HTTPS endpoints. So any TCP protocol will work. Uh, so this is fairly straightforward to set up. It's basically very similar in operation to API, uh, excuse me, kubectl proxy. Uh, kubectl port forwarding, uh, here it is. Uh, all you do is specify the pod uh, or a service which you wish to access on the other end. This is an example with a pod. Um, and the target port that you wish, colon, and the target port that you wish to access, in this case, port 80. Uh, note, I'm, it's, I'm not specifying a number on the left-hand side. I'm only specifying a number on the right-hand side of the colon, which is port 80. Uh, what this will do is it will assign a random local port uh, to forward to that port 80. And in this case, that random local port that I identified was 54688. So here it's porting for, port forwarding that randomly selected port to port 80. I could specify a port on the left-hand side, in which case it would forward that local port to port 80. I'm not gonna be discussing uh, any of the details and the options. Again, this is provided for completeness mostly. Uh, here, I go ahead and do a curl command against that using HTTP and I'm accessing my Nginx server on the other end. So that, once again, a very brief overview of uh, kubectl port forwarding. This is something I'm going to cover briefly, which is logging. Uh, logs uh, in Kubernetes are simply uh, output to standard out or standard error from your pods and containers. All of this is routed into the logging subsystem, which is then stored on disk. Uh, standard out and standard error are merged together into one stream. Uh, the stream um, is uh, rotated regularly. Typically, it goes through five rotations, uh, either by time or by size uh, on, the, on the node. So uh, kubectl logs only accesses the last log in the rotation. So that's something important to know. Um, logs also can be retrieved for the previous container instance, which is handy uh, if the previous container happened to fail uh, due to an error can access the previous container's logs to perform debugging. Here are some examples uh, of, uh, here are some examples of retrieving logs uh, on the nodes. The first one is simply, uh, simply getting the logs out uh, for uh, my Nginx deployment. Uh, in this case, it's getting all containers within the Nginx deployment, which is, uh, which is handy. Uh, keep in mind that you can use label uh, label matching uh, for uh, for logging. Uh, so in this e next example, uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm getting logs uh, for all uh, containers uh, with the uh, label of app nginx. Uh, I'm adding a prefix on that so I know exactly which container it's coming from, and uh, I get the output. So. That's handy if you're looking at a group of containers uh, that are associated with a particular application, for instance. Next, I'm going to talk to you about kubectl attach. Like logs, kubectl attach allows you to deal with the output from standard out and standard error. Unlike logs, it allows you to deal with standard out and standard error separately, as well as gives you access to standard in. So you can use kubectl attach to get access to uh, all three of these standard streams 
uh, for terminal access uh, or for sec separate access to standard out and standard error. Uh, you'll be given the option to allocate a TTY, uh, which allows full interactive access to uh, shell, for example, that's uh, running in your pod. Uh, here's a very simple example of kubectl attach. Uh, here I'm running kubectl attach to redirect standard out and standard error uh, from my nginx deployment pod um, in namespace demo one. Um, so I'm going to take a, a slight digression and talk about kubectl run. Uh, talk about kubectl run um, because this is closely related to kubectl attach. So here in this example, uh, I'm using kubectl run to uh, run a pod. Kubectl run is basically a quick way of getting a pod up and running uh, for a specific container. And in this case, it's just running BusyBox. Uh, here, I can specify uh, dash, the options dash i and dash t. i allocates standard in, uh, dash t uh, allocates a tty. Uh, and here I can see the effects of uh, specifying the dash T below. Uh, so once I do the kubectl run, uh, it's going to log me in uh, to, the, to the container, uh, give me a command prompt, and I can go ahead and type TTY. Um, here you can see that I have a TTY allocated on the, the PTS0. And if I take a look at the file descriptors for my first process, you can see that all of these are routed to TTYs, or rather to the TTY um, that I've allocated. This is a slightly different version of kubectl run. And you can see here I've left off the T option, but I left the I option on. So I go ahead and run BusyBox, and it's going to attach to it once again and hit enter a few times, and this is going to allow me to uh, execute commands. Here, I'm going to run TTY, just as I did in the previous example. And you can see, not a TTY, since I haven't allocated a TTY. And if I look for my file descriptors uh, for the first process, you can see that these file descriptors are all forwarded to pipes. These pipes presumably go over the network to my local client, uh, which allows this access. So now kubectl uh, run, actually, uh, you can think of it as executing two commands, the run command itself and a separate attach. Uh, so here, I can use, run kubectl run with the same options, but at the very end, I'm going to say attach equals false. This tells kubectl run not to run an attach after you've run the pod. Uh, this will just run the pod in the background and wait for an attach which I'm doing here. Um, here, I can go ahead and attach to it. Again, I specify my pod. And uh, as before, I can go ahead and uh, run commands in that pod. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples that show you the various effects of, uh, uh, of the options uh, from kubectl run on kubectl attach. So here, I'm running kubectl run uh, dash i and t, so I'm allocating standard in and a TTY. Uh, I'm going to run that pod in the background with attach equals false, and then later on, I'll go ahead and attach to it. And in this case, I'm going to attach to it, uh, but I'm going to redirect standard out and standard error to separate files. Um, I run that, I hit return a couple of times, and since I've uh, attached standard in, I can type commands. So in this first example, I'm going to uh, echo the string standard out to standard out. Uh, I'm going to echo standard error out to uh, uh, file descriptor two, which is standard error. And then I'm going to log out uh, by hitting control D. So I can then inspect uh, the standard out and standard error files to see what was actually put in there. And you can see here in standard out, it got both the output uh, from standard out and standard error. Um, and if I, can't, if I cat standard error, you can see that it only says, if you see this command prompt, try to press enter. If you don't see command prompt, try to press enter. Um, 
So here, by specifying the T option, it's folded uh, standard out and standard error uh, into the same stream. Uh, that is the standard out stream. Uh, if I leave off a T option uh, here, uh, when I run when I uh, run the pod, and then I do the same as I did before with the redirections, and run the same commands, you can see here that the output and the files are going to be different. This actually separates standard out and standard error, uh, so I can treat each stream separately. Uh, very handy for debugging. So KubeCrev Attach allows you to forward uh, your standard streams uh, locally to your client, which is very handy. Uh, if uh, you'd like to be able to split out standard error and standard out, uh, then you should uh, not use the terminal allocation uh, in the pod, uh, either in the uh, TTY options within the pod or when you use uh, something like KubeCrev Run or KubeCrev Exec. So that's it. Uh, proxies, pods, and ports. Uh, what I very cursory overview of what I've covered today uh, is that uh, KubeCuddle proxy gives you direct access to your uh, API server, which can be very handy. Uh, KubeCuddle proxy not only gives you direct access to your API server, but allows you uh, to access uh, HTTP and HTTPS endpoints uh, on your pod and services, which is very handy. Um, KubeCuddle-V9 uh, can be used uh, in combination with uh, the KubeCuddle proxy uh, and Kube, just KubeCuddle commands for debugging. Uh, it outputs curl commands uh, onto, uh, into the log, uh, so you can copy and paste those curl commands uh, uh, for testing. So you can use uh, KubeCuddle with dash dash raw which gives you very similar effect uh, to using the KubeCuddle proxy command uh, without having to start up a proxy. Uh, this gives you access to uh, HTTP uh, get, delete, and post methods, which is nice. Uh, as before, it also uh, allows you to get access to HTTP and HTTPS endpoints on your pods and services. KubeCuddle Stash uh, allows you to forward standard streams to your client. Uh, if you wish to split out standard error and standard out, uh, remember the, to not allocate a TTY on your pod or container. Um, so, and last but not least, uh, port forwarding forwards uh, TCP traffic uh, via HTTP uh, 2 uh, from a pod or service. Um, the HTTP2 sometimes can get in the way of using proxies, so be mindful of that, and it will not forward UDP traffic. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, here are a couple of references. Um, uh, one covers uh, proxies, and the last one's quite good. Uh, it's all about cluster access, a uh, similar topic to this presentation. So thank you. I hope it was helpful.